Up next, we show you an innovative device that could help rehabilitate stroke survivors. How? By turning their thoughts into actions. Watch it for yourself. Meet Oswald Reedus. 68 year old suffered a stroke in September of 2014. It paralyzed his left side. He lost the ability to speak, walk, and move his left arm. Uh, well, uh, in 2014, uh, September 30th, uh, around 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, my wife said I was talking out of my head and uh, she woke me up and uh, she uh, said, uh, uh, move your arm and uh, I couldn't move my arm. And uh, I was thinking that like everyone else, uh, my arm was asleep. After years of therapy, he can talk again but his motor skills are limited. He has limited mobility in his left arm and uses a brace on his left leg to walk. I walk with a limp and a cane. I can't go into my backyard without my brace on. Uh, and I can't do anything uh, like normal men do, uh, like uh, changing the air filter in my AC unit, uh, um, standing on the ladder. You know, I can't do anything, any, any of that anymore. It seems technology could prove to be extremely useful for him. Nine years later, he's using a robotic arm that can be controlled using a brain-reading headset. Redis is hoping this technology will help him recover the use of his arm. Look at how this high-tech system works. This portable headset is called a brain-computer interface. Its five electrodes rest on the wearer's scalp. They measure the brain's electrical impulses, also called brain waves. When the headset detects that Redis wants to move his arm, it triggers a command for a connected robotic arm to move. Good job. Note that the robotic limb moves, but not entirely. The user is required to make an effort with his own arm to complete the motion. Now those calls and responses between the brain, the body and robotic movement help rewire a stroke victim's brain to gradually regain control of their limb. This process is called neuroplasticity. The headset detects the movement intent and that top-down signal goes to the robot to assist with the movement and in return the movement generates feedback back to the brain. And when you have top-down information meeting within a time window, bottom-up information, that leads to neuroplasticity or heavy on learning. And that's what changes the brain. That's what leads to neurorehabilitation. According to the University of Houston, Redis is the first person in the whole world to make use of what might become a novel medical device at home. Designed by the University of Houston and TIRR Memorial Herman Hospital in Texas, the device is a long way from falling into the hands of consumers. The headset's lead designer hopes that the headset will cost about the price of a new computer. This technology is undergoing clinical trials at the moment. The team behind the device is still in the testing and fundraising stages of development. They hope to raise enough money for a larger clinical trial and eventually apply for FDA approval. The headset, which is connected to an exoskeleton or robotic arm, could provide an at-home option for stroke rehabilitation. <laughs>